So if you're watching this right now, it's most likely Wednesday and the vehicle will be approaching our facility, we're gonna immediately tear that down, get the battery pack out. There's much less cells. So when we're talking about 7,920 cells, 4,416 cells, we're thinking roughly 800 cells. We've heard 804 or 848. Um, these cells and the, and the configuration of this structural pack, this is one of the biggest game changers we've yeah. seen from a battery pack perspective right. in a long time. We are going to have uh, the latest and greatest of technology. We're essentially taking a brand new Model Y and ripping that battery pack out. We're not even driving it. No. Barely so at all. So here's the deal. Um, those 4680 cells, um, as you know, we've spent an awful lot of money this year on product that, uh, that we're, you know, we're hoping will sell. But this time, we're going to be selling the cells, the 4680 cells, out of that battery pack there's only a few hundred. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. So today we get an exciting new video from Monroe. Yes, with a big announcement, but they also did talk about the Model S pack versus the Model 3 and Y, saying how the Model S has five modules that are actually across the car, and the Model 3 and Y have four that are longer and go the length of the car. They also talked about how the Plaid S pack has more cells in parallel that helps to give it more power. They talked about cooling technology and some other things, definitely worth a watch. However, the most exciting thing for me was we are getting a 4680 Model Y teardown from Austin here maybe in the next few days. They went to pick it up this past weekend, so this video was obviously filmed last week. So anytime in the next week or two, maybe we'll get this video. You can actually pre-order one of the 4680 cells from this pack for $800. The single 4680 cell will come in a small glass jar in epoxy and a custom card that identifies the cell's uniqueness. So it'd definitely be really cool to have one, but then you think, well, you could also buy about one share of Tesla. That could be worth a few thousand dollars in a few years, which would make this a pretty expensive battery, but it's there, links below if you wanna grab one for yourself. So it looks like we'll be getting our wish. This is super exciting. We'll get to find out how many cells really are in the pack and we'll learn so much more detail about this new revolutionary technology and structural pack design. Stay tuned for more on that. Drive Tesla Canada came out with an article today talking about a source that apparently spoke to Electric saying Tesla is now producing several thousand cars per week from Giga Austin. The figures range from at least 2,000 cars per week to as many as 5,000 cars per week, which is a pretty huge variance. Now, it's true that the Giga Austin parking lot is filling up with more Model Ys and more delivery trucks. However, not too long ago, Giga Austin was only producing around a few hundred Model Ys every week. So this would be a significant increase that yes, is possible because now with 2170 long range production, Tesla is more familiar with this style and Tesla does have more 2170 cell supply readily available. So this is definitely possible. However, either way, no matter how much cell supply supply they have, going from a few hundred to 5,000 a week in a matter of, you know, maybe two or three weeks seems like a stretch. Maybe the low end seems more reasonable. So hopefully we get more detail on this in the days to come. But for now, the fact that this source is saying either 2,000 or 5,000 cars per week, that's a monumental difference in terms of production. So I would be a little bit skeptical of this for now. Drive Tesla Canada has been in touch with two of the first customers of the Model Y long range from Austin. Both customers saying the build quality has been very good to excellent. And in case you're wondering, these cars were actually ordered toward the end of October, 2021. We got an update from Uber on its partnership with Hertz to make 50,000 Teslas available to rent for Uber drivers by 2023. Currently, drivers in 30 plus cities can rent a Tesla through this program. To date, more than 15,000 drivers have rented a Tesla through the program and completed more than 5 million fully electric trips. And this is just one anecdote, but we've seen this story play out so many times. One of the Uber drivers said, I've been behind the wheel for 31 years and I've had so many cars. I would rather drive this than any other car. And Uber is saying that while these drivers are currently renting, 92% of them say they are considering purchasing an EV. This is an awesome program, seemingly off to a great start that's going to result in many more people being exposed to EVs and specifically Teslas, and we know what happens when that happens. In case you're wondering how the supercharging billing works when you rent a Tesla from Hertz, Hertz passes through charging fees incurred at superchargers to the credit or debit card used for the rental. And another user confirmed that and also added that it was a great rental experience. Moving to Shanghai, Chris Zhang is saying as of June 26th, which would give us four days left in the month, 
Tesla had delivered 64,198 units. So with another four days, if they can do 2,500 a day, that would put it close to that 75,000 delivery figure not production, we're talking deliveries here. So we'll see if they can pull that off. Remember, so far the high watermark for deliveries has been 70,847 in December of last year. So anything over that, and we're setting new records out of Giga Shanghai for deliveries. Tesla released its company compiled consensus estimates for Q2 deliveries, and that number is 256,700. For the analysts that have adjusted their estimates based on the Shanghai shutdowns, it's kind of odd to think that some of these analysts have have not yet adjusted due to that long shutdown period, but that's what you get with some of these Wall Street analysts because remember, they are covering other companies, not just Tesla, but still, if something's worth doing, isn't it worth doing, right? Here's Tesla's company compiled consensus and we're looking at second quarter 2022, total deliveries expectation 256,700. Once again, of the people that have adjusted for the Shanghai shutdown, because of that, you can essentially disregard the bottom part of this table. And the number for 2022 now sitting at 1.394 million. And I tweeted this earlier this morning, but I think it's time we all just agree that for as long as Troy is doing what he does, he's the go-to guy. These Bloomberg and FactSet consensus estimates pretty much are irrelevant. They're not even adjusting until the last one or two days before we actually get the final numbers. And most likely they have been off. If you go back the last few quarters, their error rates have been much higher than Troy. And Troy is hands down doing the best, most detailed analysis. So he's the one that everybody should be paying attention to. And Troy, if you end up watching today's video, no pressure, just know you're killing it. Now, you hate to see things like this, but you love to read things like this. Drivers walking away unscathed from seemingly pretty serious accidents. Just remember, Tesla is some of the safest vehicles on the road. Beautiful sight here as over the weekend, a Tesla Semi rolled up to Laguna Seca with a prefab installation of superchargers things that you love to see. Just a quick note on Tesla laying off around 200 employees that are supposed to be from Tesla's auto labeling team. Remember in that recent Elon interview, he said Tesla had around 1500 auto labelers. So this would be around a 13% cut of that team. Now it is true that over time, it's going to be the trend that this human team is going to shrink as Tesla's auto labeling system becomes more effective and more integrated. Already, Elon said having the auto labeling working is like having 150,000 labelers. So unfortunately for these workers, this type of thing was bound to happen. Now, is it happening now because auto labeling is getting that much better? Or is it happening because Tesla is just looking for places to cut work? We won't know for sure, but it's something to keep in mind. We got JD Power's initial vehicle quality rankings for 2022, and overall across the industry, the quality has come down. The average number of problems per 100 vehicles increased by 11% from 162 last year to 180 this year, a record high. Why they cite supply chain, COVID, employee disruption, all of the things we've been talking about. Two important things to know about this study, 80,000 new owners of 2022 vehicles were surveyed in the first 90 days of ownership asking about problems with the vehicle. And going to the report, speaking of Tesla, JD says Tesla Motors was included in this report for the first time. However, because Tesla does not allow JD Power access to owner information in the states where that permission is required by law, Tesla vehicles remain ineligible for awards. Just a few quick takeaways, infotainment systems remain the most problematic area and battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids have been more problematic than the ICE counterparts, which really shouldn't come as a surprise because they have more chips, more technology, and things of that nature. And at the top of the initial quality rankings, Buick was the highest ranking brand. Among premium brands, it was Genesis. And the parent corporation receiving the most model level awards was General Motors. So good for them. They need all the help they can get right now. And just so you're aware, these rankings are based on problems per 100 vehicles, the PP100. The industry average was 180 problems per 100 vehicles. And scrolling down, you see the unofficial rankings for Tesla coming in at 226 and then Polestar at 328. So not good in terms of this data, but I personally do not put too much stock into this data. 
It looks like Rivian is moving toward electric bicycles. As we heard previously, that Rivian did file for a trademark registration to cover the category of bicycles, electric bicycles, and many other things related. Now, Rivian has hired the former CTO of Specialized Bicycle Components, the maker of Specialized High-End Turbo e-bikes. This individual is Chris Yu, and his current role at Rivian is the VP of Future Programs. Now, sure, Rivian should be focusing on electric vehicle production, however, if if they follow in Porsche's footsteps with a price tag for Porsche's e-bike around $10,000, I would imagine there are decent margins on something like that. So on a very small scale, however, it could be good to have a little bit of extra cash to help as it's definitely burning through it pretty quickly right now. But far more importantly, thinking about the long term, this would fit directly in line with the ethos at Rivian. Hyundai just released some images of the Ionic 6 that is coming soon, and you can light up the interior cabin with a choice of 64 colors. Some call it tacky. I personally would love this feature. This car is expected to be cheaper than the Ionic 5, which starts around $46,000. It's set to go into production next month and should go on sale in the United States in model year 2023. And we may get a full public launch on July 14th this year, where we should get more detail on range and specs. To me, this car looks like a little Porsche in the front and maybe a little Mercedes in the back, but what do you guys think? Do you like the styling? There's been a lot of chatter about this report from Grizzly Research, basically attacking Neo, saying that it's cooking the books, if you will. Now, right out of the gate, directly from Grizzly's website, it says, as of the publication date of Grizzly Research LLC's report, certain Grizzly Research associated persons and or their clients and investors have a short position. All you really need to know here is that Neo separates the battery pack from the vehicle. There's a separate entity that Neo basically sells these battery packs to, then that company leases these packs back to Neo customers effectively. Grizzly Research is saying Neo is is using this battery as a service model to inflate its revenue and profit. Grizzly making some bold claims saying that Neo would be inflating its revenue by 10% and its net profit by 95%. And this report got enough traction that Neo put out an official statement based on the report, saying exactly what you'd expect a company press release to say. The report is without merit, contains numerous errors, unsupported speculations, and misleading conclusions. This right here is one of my go-to channels for Neo information. I'll include a link in the description below. He's essentially saying that the short seller report is saying that Neo only has about 19,000 battery as a service subscribers, but this separate entity that owns the battery packs is claiming around 40,000 battery packs saying, hey, where's this discrepancy? But the word on the street from people in the know is that this 19,000 battery subscriber number that Grizzly Research was citing is actually a filtered number, meaning in reality, Neo has significantly more battery subscribers, so definitely no conclusions to be made without getting more information, official information, but we'll leave it there for now. JP Morgan noted the discrepancy that we talked about and said we remain positive on Neo. Here we get a story of a company and a country both really just dragging their feet stuck in the mud. Toyota's CEO lobbied the Japanese government to make it clear it supported hybrid vehicles as much as battery electrics. A former political figure involved in this said the use of synthetic fuel like from hydrogen would make hybrids 100% clean energy. Well, maybe, but that's a pretty big would. All you really need to know here is this. Hybrids accounted for 44% of new passenger car sales in Japan last year, with battery electric vehicles accounting for less than 1%. We know Toyota is focused on hybrids, and its first full BEV has been off to a terrible start. So Japan and Toyota both laser focused on hybrids and the hope of using more synthetic fuel to make them 100% renewable, which we are a long way off from. There was some unrest in the spot nickel market today. Due to this, some sanctions against the president of Norilsk Nickel. However, this could be premature because it's unclear if these sanctions will extend to the mining giant that he is the president of, or if they will just be limited to him personally. It looks like the EU has agreed in theory to a deal to phase out combustion engines by 2035. However, there is one final step remaining, so we'll wait until this becomes official. I'm still hoping most of this happens naturally over the next 13 years or so. From Reuters, Liontown Resources, the same company that will supply Tesla with lithium spotamine, will also supply Ford with 150,000 dry metric tons of lithium spotamine concentrate 
each year for five years. Lucid is going to be doing a nationwide tour with pop-up stores to try to get more people in the seats of the Lucid Air Grand Touring. This program is set to run through the fall. No locations outside of California have been announced just yet. And the Mercedes CEO just said the semiconductor situation is very present and will be a challenge for the industry throughout this year and into next year. However, we have not seen any signs yet that demand is going south. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.